morning this is Gary Morgan with in the borough arclight.blogspot.com and I'm with uh, Mayor Robin Shelton we're gonna do a little interview here this morning with Mayor Shelton now, how are you this morning Mayor? I'm doing good Gary thank you thank you Out for the opportunity outstanding did you tell the citizens of Scottsboro a little bit about yourself before we get into these questions sure I'm of course Robin Shelton lifelong resident of Scottsboro uh, me and my family have all lived here our entire life I just turned 66 um, and grew up, um, parents were Bill and Eleanor Shelton, uh, my wife is Vicki Webb Shelton, her parents were Lonnie and Annie Webb, uh, three children, Will, Amber, and Scott, they're all married with three kids, make their homes here in Scottsboro, so we've, we've been a blessed family. Uh, graduate of Scottsboro High School and Calhoun Community College Nursing School, Athens College, uh, some additional studies uh, but ended up just uh, staying in the nursing career. I think you served in the military also. I did. I served in the Army Reserves uh, when Desert Storm was ramping up. Did a seven year stint, three years active, four years IRR uh, with Desert Storm as an operating room nurse. Uh, that's that's my forte years ago was operating room. And the folks don't know IRR, that's Individual Ready Reserve. Yes sir, yeah. that's correct. To be called up at any time. Yeah, subject, keep your bag packed. There you go. <laughs> well, I've got some questions here, and, and yes. I gave uh, uh, Mayor Shelton the questions in advance. There's four questions after the intro here. So the first question, Mayor, why should a citizen of Scottsboro vote for you for our mayor? Well, I feel like I've got a very proven track record. Um, you know, I, I feel proud of what we've accomplished the last four years, and I say we because it, it touches every department, and we've tried to, to move forward for the citizens. Um, I've spent my entire career uh, serving the public, whether it's in the nursing capacity or after I retired from health care, my wife and I own a private business, and, and we, we serve the public in a different capacity there. Uh, so my entire career has been a public servant. I was fortunate to serve two terms on the Scottsboro City Board of Education and then elected one term. So I've had 16 years as an elected official in some capacity and, and I tell people, uh, you know, my employer is the citizens when you're running for a public office, whether it was the school board or the city of Scottsboro. And so I feel, I feel like, uh, you know, we have moved forward. Uh, there, there are things that obviously we can improve on and, and do better. Uh, you know, it's been stated we don't have a plan. Uh, we have lots of plans, and, and I'll get into that as we go a little further into the interview. But. Okay, thank you. Uh, number two, what do you see as major problems of our city, if any? And if you do see problem, major problems, how do you propose to resolve the problems identified? Major problems, uh, of course, it seems that, that streets and, and, and road paving and drainage have surfaced as, as, I guess, a hot topic, and rightfully so. Our roads overall are, are in desperate need of a lot of attention. Each year, the city budgets $200,000 for street paving. Then we have, uh, based on what happened with the BP settlement, the state has issues all in, we call it all windfall money to the different municipalities county governments and so forth we get about an average hundred thirty five thousand a year and we have put that towards road paving uh, for several years now and then the most recent um, fuel tax that was passed uh, our projected revenue off the fuel tax is one hundred and fifteen thousand this year we're tracking to get about half that but before that came into place, we only had about 335, 340,000 a year that was for road paving. Uh, that doesn't pave many streets nowadays. Uh, and, and so one of the criticisms has been that, you know, we don't do everything with the money we get each year. Well, we've had to, had to hold back and be good stewards of uh, the public's money because some projects cost more than others. And, uh, I'll just use Clemens Road as an example. That was uh, some atrip money that the state had awarded the city. Uh, that project, um, we had a cap from the state on how much we were going to get on that of about 1.5 million. 
and the estimates on that road, our match was going to be close to a million dollars. And so we had to hold back not knowing how much that project was going to end up being. Uh, we were fortunate when bids came in, it came in under the projected amount, and so our our contribution on, on Clemens Road was $300,000. It came in about a third what we had anticipated. So, you know, we were having to hold on to funds till we got bids in. So there's a lot of, I guess, you know, just waiting to see what the project costs before you can allocate funds. Uh, so roads and, and the amount of money we put towards it is a major issue. Uh, drainage, it's been discussed. We don't have a, a plan or hadn't acted on a plan. When I took office, the city in 2010 had done an in-depth study for a drainage plan. Uh, this drainage plan has seven, uh, excuse me, has 10 points. This drainage plan is $17 million. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big animal. Well, people say, well, we haven't done anything on the drainage plan. We have. Um, out of the 10 projects listed here, we've addressed parts or all of four of the 10 uh, projects in here. And, and some have not been exactly as scripted here because based on the cost and, and further engineering studies of what we could afford. Uh, but I feel good about where we are drainage wise. Uh, we, could, we could spend $17 million across the city of Scottsboro uh, to, to work on drainage, but people don't realize when you apply for a grant and get awarded that grant, then once that money is reserved until that grant is closed out, that prohibits you from applying to other grants. And so a grant cycle may last two years. Well, if you're in a four-year term and you get a couple of grants on board, you know, you're, you're sort of handicapped how you use those funds. Well, you, you know, they're project-specific, but you can't just have multiple grants on going at one time. So back to the basic question, streets and drainage, yes, they need to be addressed. We need to put more money towards it. Uh, but, you know, we... We do as the money is allocated, and I feel good about where we are there. You mentioned seventeen million dollars on the on the plan that, for the drainage yes, plan. Yes. Is, is that is there a seventeen million dollar grant that is active now? No, 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 no. Okay. Everything we've done, we got one grant, uh, and it was for the Willow Creek. We got a four hundred fifty thousand dollar grant that did that ditch, uh, and people. That's the the ditch that runs behind. The armory, what is the armory now? Uh, the rescue squad where they're at at Cedar Hill. That ditch literally got diverted and a new ditch created that took it into the uh, branch that runs down Woods Cove Road. And so that was a $450,000 grant. That's the only grant out of this $17 million that we've gotten towards that. Uh, you know, we've put other money towards drainage, but not. Any and of course, if you, yeah. that that's commendable because Scottsboro's had some traditional and historical drainage problems. And, and we here. do, you know, one of the things that that we did that has paid off tremendously. We partnered. Uh, I got with Roy Light, who was the general manager of Water Sewer Gas, and, and then since Jimmy Green, and so we have partnered with Aqua Services, and they spray for weeds. Uh, down here on South Broad and where it empties into Roseberry to help the water flow. And so that's been a, it's not a perfect fix and we need to do some dredging and improve that channel and so forth there. But that's been a, a great partnership with them just in spraying weeds that people don't realize that is part of the drainage problem. You know, we bought property up by Carver Park from the Bynum Foundation, which is the very first phase of the project here. We bought about 12 acres of land up there that's on the books for a retention pond. We bought that from the Bynum Foundation and, and to create a retention pond because a lot of the water from Scottsboro comes from, from the northern side of town and the, and the mountains and, and those hills and mountains that, that, you know, are on that end of town. So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts here. Right. Uh, so we talked about a problem. What do you see is great about Scottsboro? The great, it's the people. It's the people. 
and, 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 and just where we live, the close proximity we are to Huntsville, Chattanooga, Atlanta, Nashville. Uh, we're blessed to be on the Tennessee River and have uh, you know, recreational sports. I think uh, when all the, the unrest that was going on and, and, and the issues about black lives or this life or that life, I think our community came together and showed our true colors that, you know, we just respect each other for who we are. And I think we're blessed in, in this part of the state and country for, you know, this southern hospitality. Is there anything else you'd like to add to uh, this presentation? Well, I want to. I, I do want to touch on one thing or a couple of things that I'm passionate about. Um, Goose Pond Colony always comes up, whether it's the colony side or the island side. I, I feel like as we move forward the next uh, two to five years, we have to take advantage of the growth that's happening in Huntsville with Redstone Arsenal and the FBI and and, and all the the intricacies of, of military contracts and so forth. We have to take advantage of what we have to offer for residential housing. Uh, residential housing and growth within the city leads to more retail sales, retail development, restaurants, uh, grocery stores, that sort of thing. We have to take advantage of that. We have to take advantage of what we have at Goose Pond Colony and expand those services. Uh, have have great hopes, uh, you know, that we will maybe sooner than later land a hotel out there, which could be uh, a big boost for our economy. So I, I feel good about that. I feel good about the airport. A lot of people don't realize how important our airport is, and, and we've been fortunate, you know, we, we have a rolling master plan for the airport, and this year alone we've gotten grants for four projects out there. Uh, but people don't realize, you know, whether it's um, a cattle buyer that buys millions of dollars worth of cattle that uses our airport, or a, um, a Lozier, or a, a Google, or, or, you know, Brian Owens with Unclaimed Baggage, how much they use our airport, or the military if they have a stopover. Uh, it, it, people just don't realize the importance of our airport and what it could do and, and you know our goal and desire and plan is to create a, a smaller industrial park up there which creates diverse jobs which which helps our job market uh, so there's there's a lot of things that we have to do and, and they're all built off each other you know you can see you know the efforts of Main Street and, and what we're doing there and the revitalization of our downtown which goes back to southern hospitality and and making this a, a true special place. Right. And uh, personally, I hope the Main Street program is very successful. Uh, what, what do you think about it? Oh, I, it? I was there, you know, from day one. Uh, been in a lot of meetings. Uh, was very fortunate to be part of the, a very small part of the presentation that was put together. I was in Birmingham when, when they pitched it. Uh, it was very, I was told I was one of the few mayors that had ever come to an actual presentation from a city uh, to be part of a Main Street program. I feel fortunate that. Mary Helmer, the state director, has been real good. Meg Nippers started it. Katie Kirkland now runs it, uh, has got a great group of volunteers. Uh, and, and I just see great things. Uh, they're extremely aggressive. We've got some restaurants very interested in coming to downtown. We've got some buildings that we have targeted to try to put new life in. Uh, you don't wave a magic wand. You have to go and find investors willing to, to believe in your, your project, your story, and, and put money into these properties. So, a lot of, a lot of great things going on. And I don't, I don't personally don't think it's time for a reset and let's start over. I want to keep going. I hear you. Well, thank you. Thank and, you. And that's, uh, that, this, will, this will wrap it up. This is Gary Morgan uh, in the borough, arclight.blogspot.com. And you can also see this on YouTube on my channel on there, Gary Morgan, Gary with two R's, but Gary Morgan on YouTube. Mayor, thank you so much thank for this you, interview. Thank you, appreciate what you do.